What's going on, everybody? Another great day here inside the Black Actors Studio. Thank you for joining me. I'm your host, Danny Royce, and joining me today is an incredible guest. He has created his own table here in the entertainment industry by creating his own network and making many, many TV films and bringing it to you so you can watch it wherever you are. Stay tuned. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm your boy Danny Royce, and joining me today, he is a former exec at Fox Soul, also the founder and creator of In the Black Network. Please welcome the Black Actors Studio. is very proud to have James Dubose. What's good? Good. Man. How are you? Thanks for having me. How are you doing? I'm good, man. Thanks for having me. Good. Good. Thank nice you. to see you. Yeah. Thank you. How uh, How's doing your day well. going? I'm blessed. Good. Good. I'm blessed. And um, so. I want to say first and foremost, congratulations on In the Black Network. Thank you. So you're, you're doing this, you're striving for this, and creating black excellence. Um, first and foremost, what was the reasoning behind that? Why, why did you create this? In the Black Network? Yeah. Um, I, I guess the, 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 the short answer is it was always the vision, it was always a dream. Mm -hmm. um, you know, previously I was at Fox Hole and we were able to, to start that and launch that back in. January 2020 right. and the idea was eventually if not a hundred percent black owned at least majority black owned right. and you know things change and, 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 and ideas and so forth change and you can't be mad at it because if you don't own it you can't expect them to do exactly what you were hoping they would do right um, but it gave me an opportunity after that as things started to change at Fox so to just uh, continue on the vision and do what I felt was necessary uh, or what I thought um, the timing was to, mm -hmm. to, to go out and do what I call uh, my, my last leg, if you will. Mm -hmm. it's just, this, this shall be the legacy. Right. Yeah. Okay, I like that. Well, as we always do in the <clears throat> studio, I like to start at the beginning. Mm -hmm. Where were you born? Uh, Greensboro, North Carolina. North Carolina. Anybody yeah. North Carolina here? Anybody? No. <laughs> sorry, you on your own. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> yeah. um, okay. Okay. So, <laughs> what was uh, what was like your your father's profession growing up? Do you remember? So my father was in the in, in the army for a while. Oh, okay. Um, and then he worked. He was a chef in the army, and then he came out. And he was an entrepreneur. Had uh, a couple of uh, small markets in in, in Greensboro. Um, but he always was a chef. That was his, that was his, mm -hmm. his love at heart. Nice. Um, and so that was the sort of what he did throughout. You know why he was. So up. you you grew up being good, huh? I'm from North Carolina. So <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, I used to be a chef as well. I've uh, trained in New York. Well, so. that's funny because I can't cook at all. No. Ah. <laughs> Say anyone, everyone can cook. Doesn't mean they should though, right? Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. And so, did you have any nicknames growing up? No, no, not really. None? No, not really. really? No nicknames. Or none that you want to say. No, no, no nicknames. As I, as I got a little older in college and pledged, uh, you know, oh, okay. my, my nickname was Jazzy. Uh, Jazzy. Of, yeah. And why, why was it Jazzy? Uh, just matched my personality in college. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> so you fun. pledged. Uh, where did you pledge? Omega Psi Phi Fraternity. Ah, okay. Yes. Okay. Yes, so are you still active in that? Uh, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's what's up. Then what about your, your, your mom? Uh, my mom worked uh, at what they call a, a factory in North Carolina for quite, quite a while. Um, she worked. Sometimes two and three jobs. It was just me and my mom growing up for the most part. Gotcha. Um, so I always give, I think I, I, I like to say I got my work ethic from watching her um, really work and, and grind it out to make sure that I had what I needed yeah. coming up. Yeah, so I, 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 I admire her for that. Okay. Did you have siblings growing up? Um, no. No? no. Your only child? Yes, only, only child. My, my, I have brothers and sisters, but I didn't grow up with them. Uh, my father has other kids, but I didn't grow up with them, but it was, I, I grew up as an only child. Okay. Yes. I came up in a sports world, mm -hmm. so the mm -hmm. majority of my, my life is football, basketball, baseball, um, things like that. So it was, that was, that's how I went to college on a football scholarship to Wake Forest. Um, and then I continued that, but 
you know, I, the neighborhood I grew up in is still like home um, to yeah. me, it's lifelong friends forever. So right. I, I, there was nothing I can say that I was missing um, growing up at all. I had a lot, a lot of great friends, a lot of great people around me, great family uh, on my mother and father's side. Mm. I'm still close to this very day. So I can't, I can't say that was anything I was, I was missing, so to speak. You, you didn't watch any much TV or any film, but so how did you get into this area of this industry? Right. What, what attracted you to it? Um, I think the creative process. I've always been a creative mind, creative thinker, so to speak. Um, and movies was really, I would say, um, the cinematic uh, look of it, the way it was shot and, and the storytelling. Um, I felt like there was a lot of stories that early on, um, we weren't seeing coming from where I come from and growing up in the, in the area where I grew up and I just always felt like I want to tell these stories one day mm. um, and not necessarily the <clears throat> the beauty of it if you will right. but but the struggle and then coming out the other side and if you've really ever watched my body of work over the course of, you know starting off in the reality TV space with Keisha Coles and Tiny mm. Toy and Mike Vick all those um, and I'm so grateful for them forever, but all of those shows, if you really have paid attention, they were at a, a crossroads, I like to say, in their lives at that moment, right? right? Um, so I could relate to that and, and, and I could understand that. And they trusted me with their lives, so to speak, because I wasn't trying to sensationalize who they was or coming through. It was just, I felt like their lives was very inspiring mm -hmm. if they would just open up and, and, and show people, because there's more people in pain honestly, than, than having happy days on a day-to-day -day basis. Right. But if they see someone that's coming out of it that looked like them, um, it, it can become an inspirational thing. And I think that's why a lot of those programs resonated with so many people, because people could relate to, to what they were dealing with. Exactly. Rel relatability is, yeah. is very important. By producing. I think um, I'm, I'm more of a big picture thinker okay. than day-to-day, than -day, so to speak, right? Um, writing is something you got to be detailed and honed in and that's really not my skill set my mind <laughs> is, uh, you know, I, I have uh, what I like to say a big vision and I can see things that I want to have happen um, and then having the ability to bring the people that do the day to day that is so important that are much better at it than I ever could be um, so I think producing this I love producing not just television but I feel like I love producing business i love producing lives i love right. bringing things together to see what we did um, right. it has never been about me and i never ever want to do that okay. um, so to speak so the producing and directing and those things is, is a skill set but you also need someone that sees how to piece it all together right. and make it a cohesive um, um project if you will and that's just always been me i've always sort of been that leader if you will yeah. growing up the younger yeah. the older it didn't matter so I just, I just felt like it was my natural um, progression to, to, to produce things overall and um, you know and that's part of my entrepreneurial spirit as well of course yeah yeah, yeah. that's what's up so <clears throat> I want to get into um, Fox Soul for a second mm -hmm. okay um, <clears throat> what what was the uh, moment that you decided to transition out of Fox Soul and why was that? Fox Soul, um, you know, when we first started, first of all, it's a tough business, right? I mm -hmm. want to be clear about that. Oh, yes. The board. And <clears throat> when we first started Fox Soul, everyone used to call me and text me like, you doing what? With, with Fox? A black <laughs> network with Fox? Um, so I had to get through that, through, through all that process and let them understand that actually the, the team at Fox and, and to their credit were very, um, they had told me that they were going to give me the runway and get out their way, you know, so right. and they did that to their credit. I, I, I can never say anything different than that. Um, but at the end of the day, it's their money, it's their company, of it's course. their brand, so they get to make the decisions how they want to make the decisions, right? As things, um, you know, COVID, economics started to change, the business model started to get tough, um, they started to divest in, in, in it. Um, mm -hmm. and, and we had to cut staff, we was cutting shows, and I just felt there was not much more I could do um, being the general manager right. <clears throat> at Fox Soul. If I, if I couldn't help grow it and get it to a point that we was trying to get it to for the culture, then 
there was no need to just collect a check. Right, know, just, right. Just um, bet on myself. And when I finally made that decision, I spoke to them. It was, it was just, it was at that moment in June of 2023 um, that we parted ways. And I just said, I'm, I'm gonna go bet on myself now and, and mm. start in the black. So did they miss you? <laughs> I mean, they're still there. He's like, you, don't, this, not. <laughs> you don't care now. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, no, I'm not going to say, I'm, no, no, they're doing fine. <laughs> I'll leave it at that. And I'm doing fine. Is yeah. there something about acting and that side of entertainment that, that, um, that, Coral, that you find a passion in as well? Just seeing the performance side of it? I admire that because I'm, I'm not one that could ever be in front of a camera and, mm. and do what actors do, yeah. right? Um, <clears throat> but to be able to perform and bring things to life that's off a piece of paper, oh, oh, I, I admire that. Right. I, I think that is vital. Um, and to tell stories through a character, through, through, through what's written on paper because, again, it just goes back. Every, everybody is important in it. You can be the greatest director, the greatest producer, you can be whatever, but if someone that's acting can't bring that emotion out, can't get that feeling out that you're trying to convey to right. the audience, to me, none of it matters. Right. Um, and the way that if it's not your life directly and you're able to take something that's not necessarily organic to you and still bring that to life, that's, that's, that's a, a, that's a skill thing, set that, that, <laughs> that not many of us have. Right. And I definitely don't have it. So and that, we have actors and have. producers and directors in the audience. <clears throat> so. so what's one of the things that you would, um, you would share with you know, an inspiring producer, inspiring director? Uh, what's one of the things you would uh, um, share with them to how to get started or even how to take their career to the next level? Well, mm, I'm, I'm very careful when, when, when people ask me that, right? Mm -hmm. um, because everyone's journey is different. Yes. It's, it's never going to be the same for anybody. Right. But what I always caution people is not look at me or you or, or whoever else and, and try to compare and say, I want to go that route, I want to be that. You have to learn yourself. Um, and, and, and I want to be, <clears throat> want to be um, clear when I say that. Like a lot of people say they've been trying to produce or act or direct for years. Right. But every, every day they're switching to something else. They see mm -hmm. this director and then they want to do what they do. And they see this actor and they want to do what they do. And what they find out is a year, five years, 10 years, whatever down the line, they haven't been true to themselves. Right. And you don't know yourself. Right. Right. So to start off in anything, any business, especially producing, if you will, um, you got to know who you are. Right. Um, because when things get tough and they will get tough, the only person you could really lean on to, to navigate through whatever it may be, maybe you have to navigate is, is yourself. Right. right. Um, you can go to school and you can go get jobs and you can learn how to write better. You can learn how to act better. You can learn how to do all of this stuff better. Um, but no one can teach you how to be you better. That's true. And so I, I just always want to tell people, whatever you start, I, I'm not going to tell you how to be a producer, how to be, just don't quit, right? Just, mm -hmm. just stay the course mm -hmm. and don't quit. And outside of yourself, make sure you build genuine relationships, right? Yes. Um, the, 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 the second part of that is genuine relationships. Just make sure it's a value for value. A lot of people come to you and ask for things, mm. but it's a one-way street. They're mm -hmm. not bringing value. They, they just want to withdraw and never deposit anything. Mm. So when you go to someone and you ask them for help, make sure you understand what value you can bring to them and let them know that. Right. So to me, it got to be value to value. Yeah, and that's, that's true. A good mentor always told me to um, uh, always approach someone with what you can do for them. And then Correct. that finds you find value within each other that way. Right. Um, we live in an, an age of you know obviously social media is at its all time high, so we have a lot of comparison going on. Mm -hmm. You know it's kind of mm -hmm. hard to, as you said, you start looking at people what they're doing and what they're doing, and then you lose track of yourself. Mm -hmm. um, what's a good way to keep yourself grounded and to keep yourself um, honest with yourself, honestly? You just said it, like be honest with yourself, be mm -hmm. honest where you are, and do a lot of reflecting. Like mm -hmm. really look in the mirror and talk to yourself. 
Like mm -hmm. you would think that's crazy, right? Mm -hmm. But I, I find that and I find it valuable through my own ups and downs and trials of life. That, right. You know, talking to yourself is very healthy um, if you're honest with yourself. True. Right? And you, you got to ask yourself every day, if I'm not where I'm, where I'm wanting to be, why? And stop looking at any outside um, circumstances or forces, if you will. Right. And you have to look at yourself. So, so I think that that is significant. Um, it's really, it's, it's really talking to yourself, reflecting, and being honest right. with your weaknesses. You know, I, there's a there's a saying that I love. It's like you know, work your strengths and partner with your weaknesses. Mm. But the, but. Unfortunately, a lot of us don't want to recognize our weaknesses or admit them. Right, we just want right. to act like we're, we, we're good at everything. Right. And that is the beginning of a destruction. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. Multi, a lot of people yeah. claim to be multifaceted, but don't, yeah. really, uh, right. don't really do it. You can be good at something, but it don't mean you, it's meant for you to do that. Exactly. Yeah. That's very yeah. true. Yeah. Um, so on, on, <clears throat> on the screen, uh, have you seen any, any people of color or... Um, or shows anything that inspired you to to get into this field? Yeah, you know what? Um, I mean, obviously the the Malcolm X movies, and, mm -hmm. and, and so I gravitate. If I do watch the, I gravitate to uh, what I like to say is people that have started at a struggle or started at something that 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 is difficult. Um, been through the mud and then come out the other side, right? Okay. So I like biographies, if you will, or, gotcha. or, or real life stories that I, that I can relate to. But I'm inspired by everybody. I mean, I really, I watch sports just because I'm inspired by greatness. Mm. Right? I'm, in, I'm inspired by other people's God-given talent and how great they are at something. But then I dig a little deeper and I want to know how hard they work to get that. Cause you, you know, you can't just wake up and think I'm gonna go do whatever <laughs> it is I'm gonna do. Right. So um, the movies, like anything of color, to be honest with you, because it's so difficult for us, right? Yes. It's so difficult, and, yes. and uh, is anyone that's doing it on a consistent basis, anyone mm -hmm. that's really, you see them in different roles in different movies, like I'm inspired by that, because mm -hmm. I know how difficult that, that could be. So I'm never, just not, I wouldn't say one film or one individual, um, or a few individuals that I will, I will pick and choose. It's, it's weird, I do everything for information. Mm. Hardly ever for entertainment. Yeah, gotcha. Okay. And that, so it's hard for me to answer who I'm inspired by because I'm trying to gather information to better myself, to look at myself um, from the success and the failures and the overcoming of their journey from everything I do. So I'm an information guy. Ah, right? okay. I'm an information I get that. Guy. Yeah. yeah, when you talk about sports, <laughs> um, I mean, being a former athlete, it, it instills discipline, it instills Absolutely. so much, right, that you, that you can just take with you in the rest of your life, right? Right. right. Um, who, what's your favorite football team? San Francisco 49 uh, Okay, okay. Yes, yeah. All right. I'm a Cowboys guy, so. Uh, yeah. <laughs> what's that? Yeah, yes, sir. Next year. <laughs> it's always next year, it's right? Always, it's always next year. <laughs> <laughs> always next year. Um, what were some of your uh, your challenges? Um, we're gonna get into in the Black Network shortly, uh, but I want to know what like what were some of your challenges in the beginning, and how did you get over those challenges? Because um, a lot of people <clears throat> they allow the challenges to to beat them, unfortunately. Right. So what what was some of your ways to get over them? <clears throat> um, to be honest with you, Danny, it, it I want to. Um I didn't do too well at that, honestly, mm. at getting over it. Um, and I say that to say that, you know, for me, success in the, in the business happened relatively fast um, when I when I divide, when I decided to venture off on my on my first thing and started DuBose Entertainment um, in 2005. Okay. <clears throat> and my first show under my own banner was um, the Keisha Cole series, mm -hmm. the way it is, yep. and then from there everything. Everything went there, and, and you know it's funny. I had to literally beg the people, the, the powers to be at BT at the time, to like just give me an opportunity. Yeah. And they wanted to see what I did, so I did. Um, I went in and oversaw this show called Season of the Tiger, which was based on the Grambling State football team and, and band. But <clears throat> I saw that to say that, you know, I've, I've sports, I've had success pretty much all my life at that. Work ethic, worked very hard in the business. 2005, started my own thing, and then 
from there, success just came. Like everything I touched was just turning to, to gold, gold, so to speak, right? Mm -hmm. um, and what I tell people those, for me, success was the worst thing that could have happened to me personally at that time. Mm. Uh, because you hear a lot of times that people say you got to be at the right place at the right time. Right. And I, I, I just like to add to that, you actually have to be the right person at the right place at the right time. Okay, come on. Um, because Damn. a blessing given too soon ain't a blessing at all if you ain't ready for it. Right, right. And I wasn't prepared for it personally. When I go back to you, there was a lot of things, issues that I didn't, hadn't resolved with myself. Um, and quite frankly, success allowed me to master. But at my height, at, at the highest professionally, be it financially, personally, whatever, I was actually at my lowest inside. Like to the point of depression and suicide and the whole thing. Um, and uh, to a point where, I, and I like to be honest with people, so yeah. if you ask me, I'm just gonna yeah, tell you please. It is. <laughs> to a point that my prayers were, God, don't wake me up. Mm. Please don't let me see tomorrow. Wow. And this is when I had more shows on TV when I was like, my name was, and that was never my case because I was not a happy individual inside. I hadn't worked on me enough, right? right? right. Um, so it took me a lot um, to, to come over that. It took me a lot to recognize that and to be honest with myself about that when I go back to saying what I'm saying. Um, and it took just one person to really know me and see me, to really save me. Because I felt like a lot of the people that I was associating myself with didn't overcome that and um, hmm. didn't survive that. I'll just, I'll just leave it at that. Yeah, um, yeah. They didn't survive that. Um, and so once one person saw me and, 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 and said, I'm gonna make sure I, I send you to get help because I'm not paying for your funeral. Hmm. Um, you know, that's a powerful thing when yeah. someone sees you. At that point, I, was, I felt invisible, right? Um, so when things, fall apart and you just hit rock bottom, eventually it's going to because your inner world definitely creates your outer world. If you're a mess inside, eventually your outside world become a mess. Right. You may have a little success after a while, but eventually it's going to catch up to you. Right. And, and they caught up to me. And so I had to fix that. And now going through that, thanking God that I came out on the other side of that, um, I could speak to it from a genuine voice, from a genuine way. Mm -hmm. um, and take responsibility for myself, right? Right. Uh, first and foremost, and that's why I tell people you have to re reflect and be honest with yourself because living a lie every day would eventually catch up to you. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Okay, I like that. I like that. Um, <clears throat> now, we all want to know, how do you create your own network? Like, there's got to be a lot of work. Um, the vision's got to be incredible. So how did you get into that? Well, like I said, I've always been in the entrepreneur spirit, yeah. but I, but I want to be clear. Um, I was simply smart enough to bring the right people with me, right? And 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 yes, I have a vision, and yes, I can be bullish on certain things, that I need, <laughs> right? Um, but you don't, you, I, individuals don't build networks. They don't build businesses. Right. That's the truth of the matter, is, mm -hmm. right? Um, the team is, is what it's about. So exactly. anytime someone asks me that, I want to be clear that I have, well, I feel I'm very blessed to have people that just believe in the vision, okay. yeah. um, believe in themselves and believe in what we're doing. And so that's how, as fact, like, Love Fox Soul in June, we launched October 2nd. Yeah. Like, it's a few months later, mm -hmm. right? So this wasn't like I just thought about this right, in June. Right, right, exactly. Like, this has always uh -huh. been going. And I've been thinking about the people. And then just through prayer, I've met certain people just through other people calling. You should meet them. You should come through. Um, and so it's, it's difficult, though, you know. Um, we are who we are. We're unapologetically black, but consumable by all. And that comes with its own challenges with of ad course. dollars and all the things that, that, that everyone faces, right? Of so course. it's not new to that. Um, but I definitely have a vision and a plan that I believe, I believe in it. And I'm going to stick to it until I'm no longer here. Um, you know, I'm trying or will or we will um, build our own black Tubi mm. where everything for us is at one spot, it's one place. You ain't got to go to multiple places to see it. Um, 
and people ask you don't want to be on all these different outlets you don't be a fast <laughs> channel no you ain't you got to go to tubi to watch tubi you got to go to netflix yeah, to watch netflix you you're gonna 10, have to come to, you're gonna have to network. come to in the black to watch in the black and, and we got to give you the right content but okay. so building that to answer your question is 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 the foundation is the team mm -hmm. and, and, I, and i'm always very grateful for them now so <laughs> what what <clears throat> what do you look for uh in certain like media and tv and films to to, to add on in the black network what's one of the things that you look for well you know our, our, our tagline is giving you that feeling and when people ask me what's the feeling it is people sell products yeah and we're selling feelings we want you to be emotionally connected to what we're doing mm -hmm. because when you're emotionally connected to something you come back exactly be it love be it your outfits your clothes whatever yeah. it is that you have an emotional connection to you go back to that and so when we're looking at projects or people that we want to work around do you have a point of view or perspective that people need to hear first and foremost? Are you leaving us with some type of feeling outside of just being entertained? Mm. Um, and then are you leaving us inspired, right? Because, and it's difficult, let me be honest with you, a lot of people just want to be entertained. They want right. to take an hour or two and forget their own issues and forget their own problems by watching this for an hour and to force people to, you know, a lot of the content that we try to find is forcing people to have that mirror up. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't want to look mm -hmm. at themselves in truth, yeah. right? So it's hard to get people to do that. And, and we're nowhere close to where we need to be. Um, but we're going to stick to the plan, and the plan is to find people like what you're doing. It's so like, I admire this, right? This is, this is, this is, this is um, important for me to be a part of. So thank you again for really having me. Like, of I course. admire this. Thank you for I admire what you're doing. So it's that kind of thing that anyone no matter the age dreams don't have an expiration date right so i don't exactly. care how old you are you know our dreams don't have an expiration date and we want to find people that will inspire people to keep going but also be entertained educated and inspired um but be emotionally be emotionally attached to what we're doing that's right important. yeah speaking of love so since uh sincerely in love or yeah. sincerely love yes yeah that you just posted up. tell us yeah. about that uh project um Actually, a, a, a colleague of mine from um, We TV okay. sent sent the producers um, to me, introduced us. Okay, um, they had sent it to them. They couldn't do it at the time, so um, she she, it she 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 brought it to us, and I watched it, and it was exactly, you know, what 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 we what were looking for, look for as, as a network. You know, everyone who doesn't want love. Either you want it, you hide it from me, you run it from me, exactly. you fight for it, some, something in the body, right? right. Um, and, and the way the, the, uh, they did it, was, I thought, was very beautiful, right? And the one thing, honestly, it was amazing to me that it hadn't been on any platform. Mm. They, they could not sell this thing. Interesting. And I'm like, this is a, this is a, good, this is a great show. Yeah. But it's difficult for us Yes. You know, um, yes. To, to go and sell things. So... Uh, that was an easy choice, and the whole team loved it immediately, and, and it is performing extremely well for us. That's what's up. Yeah. Beautiful, yeah. beautiful. Um, so, any upcoming projects that uh, that you've looked at so far, or some plan to meet with? Yeah. Um, so again, for me, I try to look at things in totality. Yeah. Um, we just went global. So we just hey. started our... Um, that deserves an applause yeah, right there. Thank you. <laughs> uh, we, February 5th, we're going to be launching our um, African channel. Ah, content. okay. We have okay. 70 hours of content we just licensed. We scripted shows and movies and documentaries um, from, from, from Africa and Nigeria and those areas. Uh, nice, we're going to bring nice. that over, over to us as well. Um, and then we have more scripted things that, that, that I, want, I want to speak mm -hmm. about. We have some big names that, you know, and, and the thing is, I have to just say this, is we have a, in three months, we have a lot of content, right? right. Um, and that just goes back to the relationships. It goes back to the, to the team that we have. Um, but we're also really trying to represent the culture, right? right? The totality of the culture. We have our faith-based channel, which is Merge TV. We did the Clark Sisters movie with, uh, with Harley yes, Carter and yes. all that stuff. We have our 24-7 sports channel on Beaton um, that's there now. And then Urban Flix, if you're familiar with that, was a yeah, subscription Flix, base. Yeah. We just brought that over as a fast channel as well. And then to add the global content. And then a few more things that's coming, that's coming out, the, out, nice. out the box is great. Yeah, so we are, 
I let them do the day to day of shows, and I'm trying to just build a network. <laughs> right. <laughs> that, that's that's my job. I work for them. That's my job. Why Why is it important for you to tell the black experience? Where else you gonna get it? At? Mm. <laughs> Done. That was, that was the quickest and best answer. Okay. Yeah, no, I get that for sure, for sure. Um, so I want to get into uh, the current current event, right? There's a current, there's a lot going, a lot of people coming out and talking about, you know, um, sexual harassment, all these things <clears throat> in the industry. Um, the casting couch is no secret. It's been around for ages, right? Mm -hmm. um, do you do you think that this will change uh, the face of entertainment moving forward, or and and AI as well? Do you think this is going to have a big change on the on the industry moving forward, as far as uh, people working with each other or just this? these accusations just coming right. out of nowhere. Um, and I'm not saying anyone's lying or anything like that, but what, what are your thoughts on that and the, and the future of the industry? Well, I, I can't speak on, I don't know anything about right. it. And I don't talk about it because I don't know nothing. Right? Mm -hmm. I can't. I, people have their stories that they, they need to get out or, or their truths, if you will. Right. And I, just, I leave that where it is because I don't know anything about any of that. Mm -hmm. um, but I will say that, in terms of changing the industry, I, I don't. I mean, I don't think I just see people just trying to, you know, as we all are, it, it, uh, uh, work on ourselves. Some things got to be released in order for us to move forward. Yeah. Um, and unless, as individually, as we become, as individuals, if we become our best selves, then the industry will never stop. And, and let's be honest, the industry needs our culture. Yeah. So we're, sure. and we, so we're not, always we're, not, we're not going anywhere always with will. that. Right? <laughs> um, technology, the AI, and things like that. Listen, I, I, I mean, I'm, I'm old enough to know there was no Google at one point. You know, <laughs> all these things, right? Um, yeah. So I, I try to, instead of fighting it, it's because it's going to happen. Yeah. You're not going to defeat it's inevitable. it. Just embrace it and see how they can help. Um, so I don't, I, if it's going to change, it's going to change is how we... Um, Look at it. If it's going to change anything, it is. It will be our reaction to it. Mm -hmm. um, and if we react to it in a positive, the right way, and see how it can benefit us, um, and, and and work collectively to, to, to directly help us and 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 directly help everyone, then yeah. it's going to be fine. But this this industry, it's not going anywhere. No, you just you just need people that's going to champion and fight for. What, what we need in any situation, be it technology or what have you. Yeah, I mean, that's <laughs> extremely important. We, we had the longest actor strike, you know? Right. And so that, that affected so many people. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Uh, anywhere from wardrobe to makeup to the set design to, I mean, it just affected Absolutely. everyone. Absolutely. Um, d did you have any trouble during that time? And then how was it after um, the strike was lifted? We didn't. We didn't um, have any trouble in that time. Think call because we were, you know, basically just starting. Obviously, mm -hmm. we had. I don't believe we had launched at that at that time during that period. Um, but but I'm glad it's back. I'm glad that yeah. got over. Uh, to 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 be honest, the only thing I wish there was a lot of big names that I study in, um, from Bob Iger to mm -hmm. uh, all the names that you know. Um, Netflix CEO, Discovery Warner CEO, like they were all, I, I was reading about them always being at the table and negotiating with the union heads for what was going to be what. Yeah. But I never saw anyone named that looked like us. So it had me always thinking, well, who's negotiating on our behalf? Exactly. Because we exactly. were already getting less than, right? Right. Um, and so that was one of the things I said. I want to just get to a point where one day I'll be able to sit at that table and negotiate and, and say some things on our behalf. So that inspired me. Um, I didn't take it anyway. It's just that's the world we live in. Mm -hmm. And again, I study those guys. They're very successful. And mm -hmm. I learned a lot from reading their books and things right. of that nature. But at the same time, 
I always say you can't expect people who don't know our culture or respect our culture to help us enhance our culture, right? So if you wake up and live the culture every day, you got to be at the table to be able to fight for it. Exactly. You're going to fight for what you know. And there's no right or wrong to that. It's right. just it is what it is. So right. I hope a strike never has to happen again. But if it does, I, I, want, I want somebody that represents us to be at the table and be in the press and be able to have some, some say on the right. deal that's actually being made as well. Right. Yeah. That's a good, that's a good perspective to have. Um, all right, so I'm going to ask you some questions, and I want you to tell me the first thing that comes to your mind, okay? All right. Not, no, no, no thinking, okay? Just <laughs> quick and fast, all right? All right. <clears throat> What's your favorite word? Love. That's your least favorite word? Hate. What's something that turns you on? Money. <laughs> it's nice. Something that turns you off? Laziness. Mm. A sound or noise that you love? Music. I just love music. What's a sound or noise that you hate? Screaming. Screaming? Mm -hmm. Okay. You don't, you don't visit a lot of amusement parks, huh? <laughs> Uh, so not, not necessarily that kind of screaming, oh. <laughs> but screaming. Oh, I got you. <laughs> um, if you don't, that's totally fine. What's your favorite cuss word? But if you don't, no, I cuss. cuss. You um, I have a lot to go to words. <laughs> What's your favorite? I don't necessarily, um, necessarily have a favorite. You don't. You don't necessarily have. Elfie was probably my. Favorite. <laughs> <laughs> probably, okay. Probably good. What profession other than your own would you uh, participate in? Mm. That's a good one. I never, I never, you know what? I don't, I, nothing else I could do, but to be honest with you. Really? I don't know nothing else I would do. Okay. Well, then the opposite of that, what's a uh, profession that you would not participate in? Politics. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> neither will I. <laughs> All right. Heaven exists, you meet God, what would you want him to say to you? Well done. Nice. That's very nice. Um, so <laughs> we're going to play. Have you ever played this or that? I've never played it, no. Okay, well, we're <laughs> going to play it now. <laughs> so basically, it's uh, we're putting two things, comparing it to, okay? So okay. you have to choose between the two, all right? All right. Beyonce or Rihanna? So, <laughs> so <laughs> you're no, like, wait a minute. No, this, this, <laughs> no, this is going to be very good. I want you to listen to me. <laughs> I read something that says, and I don't mean poor financially when I say these words, or rich financially when I say these words. Uh -huh. I just mean mindset. Right? Okay. A poor mindset says this or that. Yeah. A rich mindset says this and, and that. that. So <laughs> my answer is that and that. <laughs> See, that ain't the game, though. <laughs> I can't. But I do under, I give you that one. I can't, I can't. I can't. It's hard. It's hard. That's a hard one. Um, uh, waffles or pancakes? Waffles. Nice. Jeans or slacks? Jeans. Okay, nice. Producing or directing? Producer. Give a speech publicly or privately? Oh, uh, privately. So you'd rather talk to yourself than other people. Got it. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. 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 Wine or beer? Wine. Ah, okay. And last but not least, you ready for this one? Angela or Viola? This and. <laughs> 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 this and that. This and that. Okay. Beautiful I get queens, that. man. I know. As we start um, wrapping up the interview, I want um, you to just give your last words of <clears throat> encouragement, inspiration. I mean, the whole reason of this show, right, is to um, de dive down the lives of prestigious black entertainers, mm -hmm. you know, that are, in, that are in the industry, changing the world for the culture and by the culture. And one of my biggest things, um, one of my, my brand is Born to Inspire. So what's something that you would like to leave with them to inspire and motivate others? Right, I appreciate that. Um, first, let me again say congratulations to you. Thank you. Um, really admire that you're taking the chance and doing what you want to do, right? 
Um, so I want anyone that's watching this to also make sure that they look at someone like yourself and say, I, I, I can do it, right? <clears throat> um, you know, we read a lot of inspirational books or self-help books or go on YouTube, you get all these speeches and so forth. And uh, one of the things I try to do is I love to simplify things when I'm speaking to people, right? Mm -hmm. when I'm speaking to kids, adults, it doesn't matter. And what seems to resonate with most outside of is I want to just remind anyone that when we look at, no matter what your faith is, Christianity, you read the Bible, the Quran, what, what have you, um, we always focus on the things that God is going to do to us if we're not this or that, if we're yeah. not perfect, right? Right. But if we believe in the Word of God and whatever that Word of God is, it also says, seeking you shall find, knocking the door shall be open, yep. right? Yep. Asking you shall be received. Yeah. But we rarely ever really believe that part. Mm -hmm. So I'm just in mind to tell anyone, whatever it is you want to do and you really know you want to do it, just believe in it, tell yourself that and believe it because it is true. And just never, 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 never stop. Yes. Right? Stay the course. Trials gonna come, but anything big is supposed to have trials. Yeah, a, exactly. a big dream is supposed to be difficult, and the problem is when it becomes difficult, most of us stop because yeah. we don't we don't want to pay the price. A lot of people want the muscles, but they don't want to lift the weights. Mm -hmm. And I'm just saying, lift the weights because that word holds true. Asking you shall receive, seeking you shall find, knocking the door shall be open. But remember, he said, ask. Knock, seek. seek. There's actions that you have action. to do. Mm -hmm. I'll leave it at that. <laughs> Amen. I love that. Um, so that. this time I'm just going to open it up very quickly to anyone that would like to ask uh, Mr. DeVos a question. You can just walk up to the mic and, um, and let him have it. If there's anyone who would like to ask a question. I'm a um, big fan of your work. I actually didn't Thank even you. know that I was a big fan of your work until I kind of got prepared for today and kind of went through some of the projects that you've done. Like, excellent job. Thank you. Man. Um, Thank do you have a favorite project that you've worked on thus far? And I know that's hard, but I didn't know. I was curious to know if you had a favorite project that you worked on that you maybe still resonates and holds a special place in your right. heart. I don't want to say a favorite, um, but I'll say one that's probably always going to be the dearest to me, um, and that is the Keisha Cole series. Um, mm -hmm. and, and the reason is, to this day, I still love her family. I still love her. Yeah. But you got to remember who she was at the time. A platinum artist was already big. Um, and I was a, a guy who hadn't ever produced anything when I first started my company. And when her and I met, um, she took a chance for me. Yeah. And that opened doors for so many other things. So when people take a chance of you, when you haven't gotten any, I ain't really, I ain't have no resume yeah. um, in that sense that I, I produce shows. So. That is probably my dearest because that thing, everything else, but but every every one of them holds something true to me, and, and I'm appreciative of it. Yeah, awesome. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Thank man. you. Thank you for the question. Uh. So, uh, <laughs> James, I know you mentioned that we're going to do, or in the Black Network, we're going to do uh, global programming mm -hmm. in Africa. What's the uh, long-term vision with that? I understand uh, full transparency. I work with the network, mm -hmm. uh, and I know the vision is to make sure that we connect African stories to the U.S., but we want to make sure that the, uh, they also have access to our content. So wanted to have you expand on that a little bit because you touched on it quickly, and I really think it's powerful for people to know. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, it, it, in that regard, I'll say the one thing I missed as, as a kid is I never had an opportunity to travel. Mm. First time I got on a plane was at a football game in college that we were going to a away game. And I always, you know, there's a lot of us like that, unfortunately, that in our communities, we don't get a chance to travel. So we think the world is what we see every day in our inside world. So to be able to bring content from across other countries and so forth, it's my way of not just, again, inspiring and entertaining, but it's allowing these young adults to realize there's a bigger world out there and, and inspire them to want to go travel to see another world, see other cultures, to know that no matter what you look like, we're all, you know, have the same problems, the same issues, the same everything. Um, and so that that's really the biggest issue is is without doing a travel show per se, is mm -hmm. to allow our minds and our kids and, our, and, and, and to travel. Love it. Yes. Yeah. I love that. Thank you. Great Thank question. You. Thank you. All right. I appreciate you. Thank All you right. so Thank much. You, man. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
guys, thank you so much for uh, tuning in. We'll see you next time inside the Black Active Studio. God bless.